How's it going everyone? My name is Case and in this video Alex and I are going to be giving you the long-awaited full on-road review of the Hawk DLX and we're even going to go through our entire ownership experience with this bike. That includes taking delivery of it, assembling it, taking it off-road and now on-road. So let's check it out. That sticker right there that says Made in China, part of what makes this unique, because usually when someone is looking for their first motorcycle or an inexpensive dirt bike, enduro, something like that, they'll go for something used. But this is $2,000 brand new, including delivery. It's a motorcycle that we bought on Amazon and we took delivery of it through the mail, which means it required a little bit of assembly. So you're sure that this is an entire motorcycle? Like that's not just a piece of metal that looks like an engine, it's it's gonna work? There was gas in it, so. Check this out, Alex, look at this. First of all, fill it, right? But there's fuel in it. They shipped this from China with gas in it. I think that's that great. should tell you something. <laughs> Why not ship it with gas? Yeah. All right, so we're gonna lift the bike up. Here's our rear shock, even higher. And we're gonna try and get this shock bolt through the shock mount here. All right, Alex came up with a pretty killer plan here. What we're gonna do is get the back tire off of this tray that it shipped on. We're gonna throw the kickstand down and lean the whole bike over at such an angle that we should be able to slide the front wheel up in there and get the axle put into place. Look at that, man. It's starting to look like an actual motorcycle. It's coming together. Yeah. It needs a front end, but... Uh... It's sitting on its own now, it can roll around. All right, so I just ran and grabbed some fresh gas because the gas in here, we don't know if it's from China or from the guy that imported this bike to the US, but whatever it is, it doesn't smell too hot. There's not a lot in there. Uh, so we figure we'll just dilute it with some fresh stuff. First things first, kill switch in the run position. Now we'll go up to the key, key on. You can hear the fuel pump. Dash comes to life. Fuel gauge is now showing, uh, looks like four bars out of five. All right, let's, uh, let's give it a crank. We're in neutral, so we should be good to go. Started right up, right up. So yeah, assembly was actually pretty easy. It only took us a few hours, I'd say four hours. And that was actually on the long side of things because we were making a video during the whole process. And actually it was pretty fun. I didn't think that was a downside to buying this bike off Amazon. It was actually pretty satisfying to put the bike together. There were a few things here and there we had to touch up. Uh, for example, the rear brake switch wasn't working so we had to kind of fine tune that. There were a few things like that, but all in all, easy to put together, fun to put together and uh, yeah, not a bad experience. Not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Right here on the bodywork for the Hawk DLX, you see just a little bit of damage. And this is actually from when the bike was being transported at one point, because we have dropped this, or I should say, I dropped this right after we got done assembling it, but, it took almost no damage when I actually dropped it while riding. Check out what did happen. Oh, there it goes. Get the hang of it. <laughs> what did that just slide on? I don't know, but there's the first crash. See that? Yeah, I did. The front tire just gave out completely. <laughs> Those good Chinese tires. All right, well. Now, surprisingly, when I dropped it while actually riding, and I'm gonna blame that on these cheap Chinese tires because it shouldn't have fallen right there, but the only damage that really happened here from that was this little scrape right here on the clutch lever, a little bit of scraping on this front fork guard, and just the smallest amount on the shifter. Otherwise, the bike came out unscathed. You may rightfully be wondering if this bit of damage is from one of the times that this motorcycle was dropped, and actually it's not. That is some damage that it was shipped with from the factory. Yet, another disadvantage of this bike, this cheap little rubber thing, is 
popped off and doesn't want to pop back in. We probably have to pull this cover to put it back in and I know I'm not gonna do that anytime soon. Another disadvantage of this kind of non-name brand motorcycle is that parts are very difficult to find. This cracked body panel right here, I looked for a replacement and there are sort of some options but not that any that I could find with the same graphics kit. And that's true of everything on this motorcycle. They're not easy parts to find because this is not the typical dirt bike that people buy. And if you're riding one of these hard off-road the way you should, you're gonna have to replace parts. Now, as far as off-road performance, we haven't taken this out into the trails yet. Unfortunately, we're still a little bit too snowed in to do that. But Roman and I actually brought this over to our local motorsports track, IMI Motorsports. And well, here's what Roman thought about it. No matter how much throttle I give it, there's no more power. It's like you get 11 horsepower here, it doesn't go any faster. I wasn't sure if this thing was 60 miles. We've got a long flat stretch here. I'm going to come at you and I'm going to see what the top speed is, okay? How fast do you think I got up to? That didn't look like 60, but it, was, it looked close, probably like 50. Yeah, I got up to 51. Now, I was in fourth gear, I could have gone to fifth gear, but I don't think that there was enough torque to do any more speed. And the other thing I learned is, it almost takes as long to speed up to 50 as it does to slow down from 50. So you better have a long runway. <laughs> So no, this bike isn't as powerful, isn't as fast, and probably isn't as reliable or easy to work on as the Japanese competitors, but did Roman have fun on it over at IMI? He sure as hell did. That has been basically our experience with this bike so far, but let's go ahead and get the Hawk DLX on a public road right next to other drivers and other cars and see how it performs day to day. Before I get going on the road here, I'm sticking my hand in front of the headlight and I do see that the headlight is on, which is important to check because this motorcycle lets you turn the headlight all the way off, which means there's another step before you know that you're street legal because you need to ride on the road with your headlight on. All right, right now I'm on a little dirt road heading out of the parking lot where we were just filming and uh, 11 and a half horsepower, which is what this 280 pound dirt bike is rated at. That's a fun amount of power on dirt. I would say 20 or 30 horsepower is more fun, but 11 horsepower will get you where you need to go and do the things that you're most likely gonna want to do on dirt. However, on the street, it's gonna be an entirely different story. So let's see how it does. All right, full throttle. 38. 50. Yeah, it's not fast. It's, uh, it's about as far from fast as you get. And uh, wow, I thought there was bound to be another gear. I'm in fifth, going 50 miles an hour at over 6,000 RPM, so if you're planning to ride above 50 miles per hour very often, you might want to find a different bike. If what you're doing is around town riding, the type of thing that you would also be willing to do on a scooter or maybe a bike like the Super Cub, this would be perfectly fine around town. But if you're planning on riding long distances or riding on the highway, I would suggest a bike with more power. Now right now I'm just trying to keep up with traffic, going about 
55 in fifth gear and this bike just doesn't have much more to give past that <laughs> yeah I think everybody on bicycles hates me right now because even though it doesn't make a lot of power it is not quiet wailing she's got no more to give how's it going everyone this is case from tfl bike with our ride smarter tip of the month brought to you by rider justice we all know riding two up is one of the great aspects of riding a motorcycle but did you know that your insurance may not cover your passenger or that insurance coverage can differ if your passenger is married to you or not or that your passenger may not be covered if you cause the accident Neither did I. That's why you want to make sure you carry a healthy amount of uninsured slash underinsured coverage as well as liability insurance. Shoot for at least $250,000 of uninsured coverage and more if you can afford it. On most premiums, that works out to a couple extra bucks a year and it's worth it to protect you and the ones you love. To learn more about how to ride smarter with common sense tips anyone can follow, Go to riderjustice.com, the champions of biker rights, on the road, in the courtroom, and now across the country. Now I want to talk for a second just about the concept of buying a brand new motorcycle on Amazon for $2,000. I've bought my fair share of motorcycles, both new and used, from a dealership, Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, Friends. I've been through the whole deal. When you buy a new motorcycle, the reason you do that, the reason you spend the extra money is because you know that it's been well taken care of, it's brand new. So if you're good at taking care of your bike, you know that that bike for the entire time you own it is gonna be well maintained and you're probably not gonna have a lot of issues with it. There comes in the Hawk DLX. It's also a new motorcycle, but I wouldn't say that it's kind of stress-free. Uh, there's definitely work you still need to do to it. A lot of you in the comments below are saying that we should give this bike a valve adjustment and it doesn't even have 100 miles on it yet. Let's see, it's got 20 miles on it and it needs a valve adjustment, that is just crazy. So normally you buy a brand new motorcycle for peace of mind to know it's well taken care of and you're kind of not getting that with this. Are you better off buying a 20 year old Honda engine or Yamaha, name your brand, versus this being brand new? I don't know, that's probably a decision you have to make. If it were me though, well, you probably already know what I would do because I did just buy a 11 year old Honda on Craigslist for $2,000. So you can see where my money's going. Yeah, oh boy. Now here we go, getting on the brakes, about to make a turn through an intersection and we see yet another disadvantage. Uh, these brakes are squishy and all it takes to fix that is just to go through and bleed them. But you buy a brand new motorcycle, you don't expect that you're gonna have to bleed the front brakes. It's a problem we can fix, but it shouldn't be a problem in the first place. We're now approaching some corners and these Chinese tires have already failed me once. So I'm not sure how far I wanna push it, but what I will say for the Hawk DLX is that it's lighter than your average street bike. It's not particularly light for a dirt bike, 280 pounds. But since it's lighter than your average street bike, it is easy to pitch it back and forth. But on these cheap Chinese tires that it ships with, I wouldn't recommend pushing it very hard. They've already failed me once. And I've looked online to find a similar pair of tires and I can't find this exact set on any website that's in English at least, but I did find some tires from the same manufacturer for about 15 to 20 bucks. And that doesn't give me any extra confidence in how well they work. Let's quickly wrap up what it's like to ride the Hawk DLX on the road. The brakes are squishy, the tires are not great, it doesn't have a lot of power, and while sure, those are things that you could change, you could fix it, you could make it better, it's kind of besides the point of a brand new motorcycle. You're supposed to get it out of the box pretty much good. <laughs> and 
everyone in the comments either loves or hates this motorcycle. They either think it's a complete piece of garbage or that we're being too harsh on this motorcycle. And I think the reality is somewhere in the middle. Anyways, that's all for this video. As always, be sure to go back to tflbike.com for more news, views, and real world reviews. And just as a little bonus, I wanna know what you would buy with $2,000. So let's say you had two grand, you could buy the Hawk DLX or any other dual sport you could find on Craigslist. Let me know what your choice would be. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.